Hello Faisal, Assalamualaikum. 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 Alhamdulillah. How are you? Alhamdulillah, thank you. Brother Sapirul, how are you? Alhamdulillah, okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, dah gemuk dah. Hai. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mana tahu kan? Kita, kita Bola. Alhamdulillah lah. Bola tak ada. Bola tak ada, Bola tak ada lah. <laughs> banyak, banyak cara lain lagi. Okay. Uh, banyak cara <laughs> lain lagi. Uh. <laughs> Zaid, I'm... you still not in eh? It is site is here. It's in the listeners' space. I've been inviting him oh. to to come up as a speaker, but I think he has some technical Zaid, problems. Zaid. Let's just give him uh, give him oh, like one in. or two minutes. Sure. Assalamualaikum, everyone. Kawan semua. Bye. I can't wait for the match tonight, man. Malaysia versus Vietnam. Hmm. What's oh, your prediction, Safiro? Apa dia? What's your oh, prediction? I, uh, I really don't do prediction. <laughs> 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 tak tahu lah sebab apa tak tak tak. Um, I remember I do I just don't do. I just hope that they 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 can find the chemistry, tu lah. I know I know it's tough with COVID and all this, but. You know, but Vietnam is a strong team, yeah. Uh, this is I I believe that this is their golden generation. Uh. Mm-mm, mm-mm. It is. They've been they've been doing really well throughout the whole campaign. Um, you know, very very impressive. Uh, it's going to be very difficult. I I think it's going to be very difficult for Harimau Malaya, but um, mm. I always have my fingers crossed and uh, you know, hoping that um they win at the end. Okay. Um. I still think that Zaid has problem coming up. Um, it seems that we can't uh, proceed with him. Did private? He'll... Did did private account it? I'm not sure. I don't think. Uh, I'm, I, I don't think so. I invite to speak one more time. If not, we'll just. Um, We'll just head on without him. All right. Uh, to the ones while we wait for Zaid to uh, you know, um, come up. Uh, let me just first uh introduce everyone. This is uh, this is VSN twenty thirty Twitter Spaces hosted by Bahas Bola, and the moderator or the host is myself, Muhammad Yunus. Uh, joining me is Safirol, um, former CEO of NFDP. And uh, Ahmad Faisal, who is the CEO, the current CEO of uh, Institute Sukanegara (ISN), um, another speaker that will be joining us hopefully would be uh, Zaid. Uh, Zaid is the head of uh, TID or Talent Identification Program, uh, also uh, within ISN. All right. So um, this is an engagement program. Um, we would like to have the listeners to also have an opportunity. We also like to give the opportunity to the listeners to come up and speak. I normally open the floor for any kind of questions or any kind of sharing. Uh, half an hour or the second at the second half of this program. This program is a one hour long program. So normally by the thirtieth minute, I would uh, open the floor to anyone who is interested to throw any questions or share any of their experience to our speakers. All right. Um, uh, this program is in conjunction with VC Sukan Negara twenty thirty, and um, this is the this is a Twitter Space uh, uh, session. Uh, they have a lot of sessions. If you have any kind of suggestions, insight, or opinions that you like to share with the committee, um, I suggest that you go on to bsn twenty thirty dot my. They have a platform there where you could share your opinions and have a say uh, in shaping the future of uh, Malaysian sport. All right. Okay, I'm going to give another try to to get Zaid up here. One more. Just give him a few seconds to respond. If there's nothing, um, let's start. Okay, let's just start. Okay, Zaid is sorting it, sort, sorting the technical uh, issues that he has. So while we wait for that, um, let's just continue with our uh, 
Future Space session. My first question was actually targeted to Zaid because I wanted to know a little bit more about uh, Talent ID. I understand that uh, Talent ID or TID is um, um, very different from the conventional talent scouting system uh, existed in football, rugby or any other sports. So let's wait for him to come up. In the meantime, let's go to Safirul. Safirul. Yep. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, my, my, my question is, because I'm, I'm just like the average Joe and Jill in society, mm. yeah? Uh, and many, of, many people like myself uh, are always driven by end results. Mm. Um, we have no idea of the tinkering that happens within a talent program. So, Safirul, can you enlighten us on how uh, is NFDP uh, is a better scheme or a better program than whatever we had during the times where we had talents like... Uh, the young Rudy Ramli or the young Akmal Rizal who were terrorizing uh, Europe uh, during the Piala Nike or the Nike Cup during their days. Okay, thank you, Yunus. Uh, Assalamualaikum and a very good night to, uh, to all. Um, I think uh, to answer that question, I think it's a bit too early to masuk gear and talk about NFDP. Uh, if I may, I want to just 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 start from the very basic as layman because uh, i feel that there's a need to know how talent id has evolved in the past year so kalau boleh nak bagi sepintas lalu saja uh, some history while looking at my notes ni my notes ni pun kadang-kadang outdated dah lama dah ada yang notes from 1990 pun ada so i'm trying to trying to uh, pick and choose which one which i feel that is important to share Okay. But before okay. I, be, before I start, um, uh, this is for me. Uh, dalam mana mana room pun I, I cakap, uh, is is this is about, always about sharing and not not me trying to preach a certain certain thing and uh, to expect that uh, is the right thing. So I always believe that this contestation of ideas, especially in sports, uh, perlu sebab uh, tak semua benda yang 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 I believe in in some method is is betul. Uh, mm. That is uh, that is that is one thing about sports lah. Tapi mm. what's important is once you have decided to take that path, so everybody must be willing to work to make sure that it happens. Okay, this is talent ID as far as I know lah. I'm trying to be as layman as possible. Uh, talent identification in my books. In my books, or, or pengenal, pengenal pastian pendap, uh, apa ni, bakat dan juga scouting to, together and all that, for me, is it aims to find those individuals who have the most promise. So, I highlight the word promise to it because it, it is a predictive thing. To succeed in the future with a further consideration being the subsequent development of this promising. Uh, so, I highlight another word which is promising youngsters so that they can reach their fullest potential. <laughs> Again, I highlight potential. So, benda yang I highlight is promise, promising and potential. So, I'm, I'm talking, I'm speaking from, from, from the aspect of uh, youth development because uh, when Thailand ID is uh, whatever model that you use in uh, to find out young talent, so this is it. We are actually trying to be a prophet. Uh, to try and predict whether talent ni menjadi ke tak. Talent ID in the history of talent ID ni dah dah wujud dari dulu lagi pun. Semenjak the very first traditional or Olympic kuno 700 BC pun, dah there's some form of talent ID. Uh, bagi contoh, uh, dia ada kena-mengena juga dengan how they started uh, sports. Um, dulu, Sports is always related related to peperangan or war. So, um, in order for the Greek, for example, to prepare for war, they will do some 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 contest to find out who's the best in certain certain things. Contohnya archery, uh, and then wrestling, and then racing, and all that. So, from from that point, then they can boleh pilih. Okay, kau ni bagus. Uh, long long range archery so i know where to place you uh, when when war comes lah 
and mm-hmm. you, okay, you are a fast runner and all and all that and whatnot, and you are a uh, paling batu paling jauh. So I identify you as 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 that lah. So basically, talent ID ni sejak dulu kala pun, and we use it every day in our daily life tak semestinya dalam sukan. Yes. Macam kalau anak-anak kita kan, seorang tu nampak dia pandai sapu sampah. So memang dia punya kerja lah sapu sampah setiap minggu. So it is <laughs> so it is it is something like that lah. But dulu is always feel and what they see. Untuk sukan-sukan yang very clear macam track and field, uh, track and field where you know uh, who's the fastest and support the longest throw and all that so it's easy lah it's easy it's just it's that but the complicated thing will come when it's about team sports macam like football for example they're in a team where there's game awareness there's intelligence um, and you have to work as a team so they they become more complicated so This the reason why I'm telling a bit of the history of talent ID ni because after a while, after a while, bila sports tu dah jadi ada ada stake, there's something valuable at stake. Contohnya, uh, in the in the 18 uh, 19 century lah, uh, for example kan, in the US contohnya, when they first started to play baseball, uh, they orang mula dengan form a team lepas tu mula dah nak nak start betting betting okey kiong punya nak lawan ni so let's put some betting lah so bila money comes into play where the stake is high so it is very important for them to find the best player to be in their team to be in their team so they want guna many many ways to find out the best talent they start buying they start paying athletes so daripada semi daripada amateur jadi semi pro kemudian jadi professional so when that game when the game evolve then lagi banyak commercial aspect of it evolve so lagi banyak so so talent id become important so the first study was done in 1869 ya eh, in england uh, by sir francis galton sir francis galton ni dia mathematician mathematician sebab dia suka banding banding kan eh. Uh, study on genetics, uh, behavior, behavioral genetics and all that. So dia dia lah yang um, uh, in in the modern in the more modern modern world try to understand or study why uh, some athletes bagus dalam that bagus daripada yang athletes yang lain. Uh, nak tahu why they are asking the question why. So they started buat dengan the rowers and the wrestlers uh, dekat uh, dekat England masa tu. They were doing, there are many papers yang dia tulis. And dia ada protege dia which is I think nama Carl, Carl Pearson ni yang start stati- 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 statistics punya department dekat UCL. So at at that time, benda-benda ni dibuat oleh saintis dan pemikir. pemikir. Dia, masa tu tak ada sport science, no nothing. Sampailah ke satu masa uh, after the second world war and then in macam at the beginning of the cold war period tu masa tu uh, the apa ni Germany baru kalah eastern bloc apa communism apa semua tu baru baru kalah kan dengan dengan US apa semua tu so in the seven early 70s towards the early 80s macam tu they became so engrossed in this uh, trying to nurture ha nurture talent so masa tu the 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 argument about nature versus nature baru keluar and then uh, the 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 eastern europe european macam kat romania tu baru buat and they got some results in the 1976 olympics 19 uh, 76 1980 olympics so start masa tu lah a lot of study been done about talent identification Uh, macam uh, some some proof ah huh? 80% of bulgarian at- bulgarian athletes in 1976 olympic come from a structured talent id program so mm. modern talent identification start lebih kurang masa tu and then us just export everything from the eastern europe europe if you remember uh, dulu coach gymnastic uh, bella carioli dengan dia punya 
dia punya wife yang coach Nadia Comaneci in the 76 and 1980 ni Olympics ya yeah, nanti so they defected to US and they built a program there uh, talent ID and coaching coaching they built and then Nadia Comaneci pun defected to US in 1989 and after that the the and then sport science came into play so that's how talent ID evolved to what it is right now and there are so many methods and models out uh, out, out there yang diguna pakai dan tak semestinya satu is better one model is better than the, the other tak, tak ada so i thought i want to start with that first just to put things in right. perspective before i even check about nrp lah okay 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 but let's 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 i mean zaid is already uh, up here as a speaker let's just get him uh, on board a bit uh, zaid are you there mate you got to switch on your mic hello zaid Okay. Zay, are you there? Okay, never mind. Let's go to um Zay, are you there? I see that your mic is on but uh, I don't hear you. Zay. Okay, tak apalah. All right, while we wait for Zay to work out his mic, uh let's just go with uh Faisal for Faisal. I mean, after listening to Safiro's uh you know, history about um, how Talent ID is way back uh, in the early heydays of the, you know, former Soviet until today. Um, can you just tell us, like, how, what, what is it like in uh, ISN? Like, you know, what kind is it that you guys preach or what kind of practice in terms of uh, TID that you guys are bringing into uh, ISN and in the country? Yeah. Uh, thanks, Yunus. Uh, first of all, uh, I appreciate the opportunity given to engage uh, with uh, fellow Malaysians who are very passionate in sports. Um, and also it's a privilege uh, for me personally as, uh, as a government officer in the agencies uh, to get involved uh, in strong debate like Safirul mentioned just now. Uh, uh, whatever we do in sports is, is always uh, two sides of a coin. Uh, so I, I believe uh, having tough conversations, open debate like this, would encourage uh, a more open uh, uh, understanding on where do we go from here as a nation uh, in the context of sports. Yeah, Of course, as a nation, uh, you know, uh, we want long-term success in sports. And uh, long-term success requires, uh, of course, the right culture and the right structure. Yeah? Of course, uh, when we talk about culture, it's, of course, building a sporting culture, having passionate people, the right people at the right place, leaders at the every level of, of society, mm -hmm. uh, good, well-maintained facilities, uh, etc. And also, uh, structure-wise, of course, we talk about talent ecosystem, right from the schools up to the elite level. Yeah? And uh, the reality is that um, sports is strong, <clears throat> but it's changing. Uh, and we need to take that, that journey, uh, having getting or doing some uh, unconventional ideas um, on and all these uh, required uh, I think millions of small steps you know and it's going to be tough so <laughs> uh, in the context of uh, talent plan uh, I believe uh, there's an urgent need uh, for Malaysia like I mentioned just now the involvement of uh, talent ID and development from the traditional uh, methodology to structured uh, way of uh, identifying and developing talent. So uh, I believe that uh, we do need a talent plan. Yeah. Uh, of course, uh, in creating uh, the right ecosystem for talent uh, requires streamlining, requires leadership. Yeah. Uh, and I believe. Uh, uh, Faisal, 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 I, yeah. I, I just want to ask, like, I mean, like, yeah. um, uh, when, when, when you put it as such, right, it sounds like as if as though, like, there is a need for involvement of everyone within the ecosystem, the parents, the communities, the school, uh, the, the NSAs. Uh, I just want to know, how do you envision mm. all this to take place? You know, how, how do you envision all this to collude and take place? Uh, of course, uh, we need to organize uh, 
operate the, the look look back the way we operate and execute sports activity in Malaysia. And this has been, uh, I believe, a point of emphasis uh, over the mm -hmm. last ten years since uh, YBKJ's time, because okay. we can see uh, uh, the falling sports participation rates, uh, obesity crisis, uh, low physical activity rates in Malaysia. All these have impacted sports in Malaysia, and okay. we all realize that sports. Uh, is certainly as an outlet uh, uh, for exercise, a way to build a uh, lifelong relationship, platform to achieve uh, our goals and also realizing our potential in sports. Uh, because without having proper positive experience in sports, we uh, facing the risk of having fewer athletes in the system to drive sporting success, fewer, fewer opportunities and demand for program. And of course, uh, lesser opportunities to teach our children uh, valuable, valuable lessons in sports. So hence, uh, My Talent Plan, uh, which, is some, is, which is a project that we are currently working on, uh, I believe Zaid will tell us more about, about this project, okay. uh, is created to help, uh, of course, uh, Malaysia realize uh, their full potential in sports. And of course, not forgetting utilizing sports as a path towards uh, active and healthy lifestyle, meaning that we are going together, I mean, having uh, uh, children participate, participating in sports is very crucial, but we, we don't want the children to be promised, uh, uh, you know, uh, stars and moons, uh, that once they get involved in sport, they will be uh, <laughs> something, I mean, uh, I mean we, they are promised to be somebody, uh, Olympic star or Olympic champion, or yeah. professional players. Later, no, that's not the promise that we want to to send uh, or to educate our children. We want them just to enjoy sports, uh, learn uh, the values of sports, and then when they become somebody or they become uh, adults in the system, they will continue to believe in sports, contribute to sports, uh, invest in sports, and because uh, most of the children will, they will become yeah uh, parents, they will become administrators, they will become businessmen. They become uh, leaders in society. Uh, having positive experience throughout their, their involvement in sports will help sports in the long run. So that's uh, our belief uh, in having uh, a Malaysia uh, talent uh, development model uh, that uh, we plan to uh, to table it uh, because uh, this is in line with uh, the Business Sukan Negara. Uh, uh, we are in the final stage of uh, formulating and writing uh, the document. It's not. Mm -hmm. It's not a, a very thick document. It's a simple document, uh, and what we want it to be is for all those stakeholders involved uh, to ad to adopt uh, the spirit and also the essence of uh, this talent plan. Uh, that's why uh, in this docu in this document we do make uh, some reference to existing talent plan document throughout the world. Uh, they will be. Uh, it will be a guiding document. A practical, uh, simple and practical uh, uh, guide okay. for them. Uh, for instance, if they are, uh, we, we're going to have a My Italian Plan document uh, for parents. My Italian Plan uh, oh, nice. tips uh, yeah, for parents, for coaches, for government agencies, for, for NSAs. Yes, for teachers, for NSAs. The NSAs is one of the critical elements. NSAs, uh, even for athletes themselves, they, they do need to know and to understand uh, what are their roles in ensuring uh, and what are their roles to play uh, in ensuring that we uh, uh, all of us in the ecosystem play our role well. Uh, because I always emphasize this, uh, that uh, the era where government knows everything is over. So we need to <coughs> ensure that all cylinders in the country, the people, the society work, uh, working together with us, with the government, uh, to ensure that uh, our talent, uh, our children are given uh, enough uh, knowledge and understanding about sports, the spirit of sports, because uh, uh, the dependent on government program should should be uh, minimized. We, uh, the government should uh, allocate the resources uh, strategically. And I believe uh, with the whole, whole of sports approach that we're going to take uh, in the next 10 years, uh, getting everybody on board, uh, contributing to the system, I believe this is the way to go. Uh, and so talent ID yeah. and development will be will be something that is crucial uh, in the context of uh, the national vision for the next ten years. You know. Yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Faisal, I, I just want to know before we go mm-hmm. to Zaid and uh, hear hear from him about in detail about TID. I just mm-hmm. want to know is uh is is ISN heavily involved with the selection of students from regular schools to to attending Bukit Jalil Sports Schools? Uh no. Uh, is oh, okay. uh this is uh MOE study three. Uh, however, uh, uh, we're going to have uh, a pilot program with MOE. Uh, okay. We plan to have it uh, actually starting in June, but uh, because of the situation Lockdown. and yeah, and the amendment <laughs> to the school calendar, uh, we plan to have uh, the pilot program uh, of uh, we call it uh, Mighty ID KBS MOE program uh, in okay. 150 schools involving 60,000 students. In which uh, I believe Zaid will uh, enlighten us more on this. Uh, in okay. which we are helping uh, MOE uh, to do some uh, testing on the students uh, uh, to get to know about uh, the potential that the students have uh, and possess, and from there we go into orientate them them uh, based on uh, how they fare during the test. So this is basically what we learn. I think Zaid, uh, we have we sent him to to Belgium to uh, learn from the best guru in PID, uh, Professor Johan. And when he came back, so we suggested this to MOE. And I believe okay. this is one of the enha- enhancement that uh, we are currently working with uh, MOE on how to uh, uh, improve uh, the structure of of the id in 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 schools uh, especially in primary schools uh, especially from age uh, 9 to 12 uh, uh, currently and we're going to do this uh, starting in august and we, it's going to expand nationwide after that All so right. uh, uh, we're going Sounds to exciting. do some yeah we're going to do some t- training of trainers uh, for the teachers uh, we're going to train them on uh, a number of test batteries Uh, Wonderful. So, uh, so from there, uh, we will have uh, an app uh, developed by our our team. So they will uh, insert all the data of of the test batteries of the students in the app. Wow. And okay. from there, uh, uh, based on the algorithm at the back end, uh, we will have uh, a better uh, understanding of the data, and we can orient it uh, the children based on the. Uh, tendency and uh, their, their, their marks or points uh, based on the, the test. So for instance, if they are very good in coordination or hand coordination, uh, the apps uh, could uh, suggest or suggest. recommend to the, te- mm-hmm. uh, to, to the, to the teachers that uh, uh, this particular student is, uh, uh, you can say, uh, have talent, have some talent in uh, some racket sports, for instance, badminton. <laughs> Is this uh, application tennis. readily? Is this application readily available? Is it being used already in countries like yeah. Belgium? Yeah, yeah, it's already been ah. used in Belgium, and we're currently adopting the same thing uh, in Malaysia. So we are in the process of having it uh, almost a similar system, similar apps, uh, in ISN, and going to use it uh, during the pilot uh, stage of uh, this program. You know, wow. So that's 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 the plan. The, I mean, a general uh, overview of the plan. And uh, I believe Zaid can uh, further explain on this uh, later. You know, we would like to have mm-hmm. Zaid, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. Zaid is actually not around. <laughs> I think he's just relegated himself to a listener. Uh, I think he's still facing some technical problems. Uh, Let's just so he's sabot- sabotaging his boss. <laughs> <laughs> Have to talk about everything. <laughs> I hope nothing. I hope nothing. Uh, nothing bad happens to him this morning. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> right, but it's alright. Uh, let's let's just uh, while we wait for him again, let's just go back to Safirul. Uh, we got a few people here requesting to ask, uh, to ask question or share their thoughts. But just give me a sec, guys. Yeah. Um. Let's just give some time for Safirul here. Safirul, are you you you're still there, right, mate? No, of course. Yeah. All right. Wonderful. Wait. Um. Uh. I want to go back to the. The, the earlier question mm. I asked you, okay, right? Um, uh, when 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 NFTP first started, um, you know, I was I wanted to know how 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 great is this program in comparison to what we have right now. I used to be <clears throat> I used to be brought up with the people like Akmal Rizal and Rudy Ramli, who used to be my heroes. Uh, during the days of Dallas Nike, you know, the achievements that they achieved there, they were brought then to Germany. 
I think uh, Rudy Ramli went to Germany and then Akmal Rizal went to, to, to France. So I felt that program that we had was, you know, okay. But when F- NSDP came about, um, I wanted to know more about what's, what's so special about NSDP. You know, how, how would it enhance or enrich whatever that we have right now? Could you, could you, share, could you share a bit to me and the listeners on how, how would NSDP better whatever that we had then? Okay, thank you. Uh, just not touch sikit on uh, apa ni... Apa Don't run away from the question, eh? Bro? Huh? <laughs> Remember the question, <laughs> eh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay. uh, apa yang Faizal cakap tadi? Uh, your question to Faizal on whether <clears throat> ISN is involved or not yeah, uh, in se- selection to Sekolah Suka Malaysia. Yeah. Um, so, so tahu I uh, all this while, especially in football lah kan. Mm-hmm. Uh, ada they they do play a role, especially football. Maksudnya bila they do trials, the final trial nak masuk ke sekolah sukan, nak sekolah sukan Malaysia or during uh, apa ni scouting dekat uh, MSSM ke apa. Mm-hmm. There's always representative from FAM, uh, ISN dan juga MSN. Ada, okay. uh, yeah, ada involved juga. But I'm not sure whether other sports, uh, uh, what is the SOP for the other sports untuk dah masuk sekolah sukan ni. We, because dekat NFDP, uh, ya, kita yang paling berinteraksi paling banyak sekali ialah bahagian sukan KPM. Almost yeah. tiap-tiap hari. Tiap-tiap hari memang uh, heavy workload antara bahagian sukan KPM dengan dengan uh, NFDP uh, dulu lah. Sekarang pun I think selalu juga but I'm not sure. I can't tell now so I can tell you 2014 until 2018 when I left. Okay so so hmm. benda tu nak cakap and I will touch a bit sekejap lagi. So your question tadi you tanya basically apa beza sebelum NFDP dengan selepas NFDP ada? Ya. Yeah. Then, then you bagi contoh yang a very good example, Rudy Ramli dengan Akmal Rizal because masa dia orang uh, 14 or 16 or, or whatever, that age group tu, you can, you pernah tahu there are some achievement that they had again, macam Akmal played against Ajax, ada some yeah. um, menang banyak dan sebagainya, lepas tu Nike Cup ada sedikit sukses kat situ. Okay. Yeah. The difference between sebelum NFDP dengan selepas NFDP ialah benda macam ni. Bagi contoh, dua player ni, Akmal Rizal dengan Rudy Ramli. Kalau dulu kita membesar sebelum 2013 macam tu, bila kita main bola untuk sekolah, uh, the first opportunity kita nak ber- bermain untuk sekolah tu at a slightly higher level. I'm not talking about participation, main biasa-biasa je dah. Probably at the age of 11. If you're good enough, you will make the team of under 12 sekolah. So, bayangkan, kalau you uh, you start you start uh, getting serious into football around that age, 11 dengan age 12. Sebab MSSM akan start kejohanan dia untuk bawah 12. Okay, MSSM, dia ada bawah 12, bawah 15, bawah 18. So, prior to that, Tim siapa-siapa yang berminat main bola di sekolah tu dalam dalam konteks sekolah tu takkan ada proper training kecuali mereka-mereka yang join academy di luar. Faham tak? Faham. Ha. So bila sampai that year of MSSM, okay, katalah Akmal kan. Dia dia akan main uh, rasa sekolah-sekolah sekolah rendah dia dekat Vitra. Mm-hmm. Dia akan dapat dalam 4 5 game wakil sekolah. Lepas tu Dia akan dapat wakil daerah, um, dapat lagi dalam 4-5 game. Okay, Lepas okay. tu, dia bagus, dia akan main negeri. So, dekat MSSM, dia mungkin akan dapat dalam mungkin 6-7 game macam tu kalau kalau the team, team Kedah tu get all the way to the final. Scouting untuk seorang player bernama Akmal Rizal ni selalunya hanya akan berlaku pada towards the end of kejohanan MSSM. Kat bawah ni ada ramai coaches yang terlibat dalam bola sepak macam Coach Arafat, SSTMI apa semua ni ada. So dia orang nanti boleh 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 masuk dan uh, bu- boleh boleh uh, boleh share experience dia orang juga. 
So bila <coughs> bila MSSM saja dia akan jadi tumpuan untuk KPM untuk memilih budak-budak pergi sekolah sukan. Uh, sebelum sekolah sukan Malaysia ada uh, uh, apa uh, sebelum sekolah sukan Malaysia wujud memang tak ada lah that scouting pada tahap under tu after memang tak ada langsung lah sebab tak ada nak pilih untuk apa pun nak pergi ke form 1 dia tak ada streaming tak ada sekolah sukan Malaysia tak ada sekolah sukan negeri so i'm saying is bila sekolah sukan Malaysia dan sekolah sukan negeri dan yang ada so coaches hanya ada peluang untuk tengok budak tu dalam kejohanan MSSM sahaja untuk membuat final decision supaya budak tu boleh masuk boleh masuk ke the, uh, apa ni uh, sekolah sukan Malaysia so ditawarkan untuk belajar form 1 okey dengan ada NRP talent-talent macam Akmal Riza dan Rudi Ramli ni uh-huh. akan ditapis dan disaring masa dia umur 7 tahun lagi Oh, dia akan ha. Isn't that too early? Tak, no, uh, dia macam ni. Ev semenjak the the exist uh, modern football existed, professional league existed. Players, if you go to any player in Europe, you click on their name dalam Wikipedia, uh, give you for example Eric Dyer. Dia enam tahun dia dah masuk Academy Sporting Lisbon, English player. Marcus Rashford, 6, 7 years old semua dah been scouted and dah join training dekat akademi-akademi tertentu. Okay. Because football has become a big sport, a big industry. And it's promising some something in the future. So they want to take the chance. So they have to start early because scouts will start as early as, I don't know, I think 10, 7, 8, 10 pun dah ada sekarang ni. Budak 6 tahun pun dah ada sign letter of intent dengan parents in Europe lah. But I'm talking about in Malaysia. So, so in the other difference words, is... Sorry, in yeah, other words, if I, if I was to send my son for for mm. one of the, your NFDP programs mm. and he's 10, mm. that's a bit too late, is it? Katalah your son. How, how old is your son? 10. Okay, your son is 10 years old. Duduk ke maman? Yeah. Duduk Kemaman, uh, Kemaman ada Akademi Tunas. Yep. So every early of the year, kan? early of the year, setiap Akademi Tunas dalam di seluruh negara, semua akan buat trial. Open to everyone. Anyone nak datang, semua boleh. <laughs> Dan dia akan ambil, dia akan ambil the players from age of seven. Uh, dia akan ambil uh, dalam 20 players, age seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. So dia akan ambil a maximum of about 120 boys yang dia akan train uh, at least three times a week and main game di, di hujung minggu. But you need to be to be seen and to be scouted lah. Because they cannot provide training to to all. They can only they can only train, give give training to the one that scouted. And this has been done in Europe, in Japan. By the by the team, katalah Manchester United, the scout will go all apa ni dekat dekat area Manchester tu, then scout and will will pick players to come and train uh, with Man, Man Man United Academy, because they are the the elite, the dalam masuk elite system. So guys like Akmal Rizal dengan Rudi Ramli ni, kalau masa tu ada NFDP, would have been identified as early as seven years old. Uh, so ada ada Akademi Tunas Kubang Pasu, Akmal Rizal duduk Jitra uh-huh. dalam daerah Kubang Pasu. So kalau dia gila bola masa tu dia boleh dia pergi dan try. Tak dapat next year try lagi. Tak okay. dapat kata tengah, tengah-tengah tu ada coach from Akademi Tunas identify dia and cakap kata okey bagi dia chance masuk. Boleh masuk at any time at all kalau you rasa you uh, you, you you anak you dah memang rasanya special. Special football boleh boleh bawa pergi akademi tunas. So that's the difference. So by the time dia reach age of 14, contohnya bila dah main Nike Cup tu, dia dah ada hours and hours of training time rather than dia baru. So maksudnya a talent like Akmal Riza and Rudy Ramli could have been better polish kalau ada NBP time tu. To that that in short lah. You know, you know, if I may, you know. Okay. Uh, I have a different uh, perspective uh, compared to Safirul. Okay. Uh, because uh, we talk about uh, key principles in TID, 
mm-hmm. multi sport participation is critical is critical because uh, having uh, a well rounded foundation uh, especially below 12 lah for physical activity uh, encourage children to play in multiple sports actually uh, offer them opportunity to to explore play and discover their personal interest and skill level itu yang saya rasa lah and then uh, it also provide several uh, macam uh, kita panggil cross training benefits lah for athletes strength mm-hmm. endurance agility coordination speed training for instance i, I i've read a uh, few books lah macam michael johnson uh, our founder meter world champion dulu uh, he was involved in many sports apart from athletics they involved in uh, to basketball uh, develop dia punya explosive uh, sprinting Uh, dan macam-macam lagi lah uh, Saya rasa uh, Macam Safri cakap tadi uh, Yelah the, the, the game is like Kita, kita boleh kita kena dapat data juga lah berapa, Because Berapa ramai Our wonder kid Dalam sistem Malaysian football system That graduate uh, That we identified early Masa Nike Cup dulu ke Ataupun Mana-mana sistem ke Yang Graduate Sampai professional level And Uh, sampai tahap yang kita jangkakan masa dia umur uh, 8-9 tahun. So Fazal, you say uh, that the, uh, the, the the screening process at the early age and I mean the the selection uh, process to determine this is the sport for you is still uh, it's early. too early. But I, uh, yeah. yeah, for me it's too early because uh, that that is uh, the stage when uh, the children they explore themselves. Kan? They, they they are still uh, developing themselves. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 ni semua dia developing themselves they they get to know their sports they have fun playing uh, and of course uh, this is one of the things I think that uh, worth to for us to to pursue lah because every sport is different for instance uh, for diving and swimming they might mature earlier kan so okay. the, the need for them to 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 be identified earlier tu memang memang berbeza lah yeah but i think for other sports uh, uh, we have been handling this issue i think sakrul uh, was also exposed uh, on this uh, issue bila kita mula nfdp the rate of injuries the rate of sel injuries among the the the, the players uh, oh. uh, macam mana dia berlaku uh, in the uh, first few years of nfdp and how do we are currently addressing this and also uh, yalah the burnout issue saya rasa ni benda-benda yang kita perlu yalah i think as we go along because uh, uh, it will take some time for us to have uh, i mean a proper complete system kan but i believe it's a nfdp uh, no doubt is is a good uh, platform uh, cuma kita nak of course perbaiki dalam masa ke semasa but uh, tadi tu i think uh, having uh, them specialize too early tu is something that uh, Uh, worth to debate lah nanti after this uh, because, uh, personally I, I tak rasa that's, 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 uh, that, that early lah 8-9 tahun I, 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 I agree I agree mm. I agree. Mm. I agree. memang mm. completely agree because mm. I came from mm. a background where mm. I, I main hockey takro bola volleyball uh, basketball mm. untuk state kan so mm. maksudnya jadi jack of trades and master of none lah in my case in my case mm. but that's a personal experience mm. i agree dengan apa yang faizal cakap tu sebab kita tak boleh specialize too early true mm. maksudnya the system and the training is there academy tunas tu ada dekat situ tapi dia tak mm. dia tidak memaksa player yang nak datang training tu untuk specialize in sports but it's just if you want to 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 apa ni orang kata to polish your skill in football you can come to academy tunas hmm. exposure ha. lah exposure to the yeah, game exposure hmm. so, so if you really hmm. want to learn hmm. this skill of football and you love it so much hmm. this is the place for you and to nobody learn. owns you at that time hmm. dia bu- dia boleh memang memang this 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 issue selalu happen like like we talk uh, last time uh, apa ni semalam kan mm-hmm selalunya atlet masa kecil tu masa contoh sekolah rendah kan katalah Akmal Rizal dia tera main bola dia pun tera berlari dia pun track and field dia pun lompat jauh dia pun main takraw dia pun main hoki ramai talent-talent yang macam tu kat sekolah but at the end of the at the end of the day they can actually participate in all the other sports kalau dia nak kalau dia nak tetapi at the end of the day dia Uh, dia dan parents dia boleh buat keputusan sendiri sama ada suka, dalam banyak-banyak sukan yang dia participate tu 
Sukan mana yang dia ada the the jiwa? Kalau hmm. masa tu at the age hmm. of 7 or 8, memang hmm. minat dia yang mendalam dalam bola hmm. sepak. Takkanlah kita nak cakap dekat dia kata dalam actually you try, you try lah. You try lah sukan-sukan ni juga sebab dia dia memang nak main bola. So memang dia dalam uh, dekat akademi Tunas ni sebenarnya kebanyakannya kita tanya parents kan. Memang semua yang macam tu yang memang dalam kepala dia bola sepak je. So so yeah, coaches yeah. takkan takkan paksa dia kata okey ha mai training kat sini hang takkan dah boleh training main volleyball main badminton minat kita tak potong minat dia macam tu. Cuma if you want to polish your skill in football you can come to this place because you are selected yeah okay uh, if you that, don't come that's that's fine that's your that's your that's choice uh, yeah that's your choice okay so, you so, you so, the, so the program right. doesn't really limit or restrict uh, the kids to move lah that's betul. what you say mm, yeah that's a speed uh, of the program lah betul uh, yeah, that's why you know yeah. uh, that's why i believe uh, the talent plan is crucial because uh, Every uh, stakeholders in the system, uh, they will they will have to know and understand their rules. Uh, contoh, eh, contoh macam parents. Uh, it's not what they want. Ia adalah apa yang kanak-kanak tu ataupun anak-anak tu perlukan yeah, dan minat dia. Because macam kita belajar lah dulu. Yeah, kadang some of us, we choose uh, some program because of, it's the choice of our parents. So it's not like that lagi-lagi lah macam tu kan. So parents can understand. Uh, equip themselves with the knowledge of development, uh, not pushing the children uh, I mean, too early for success, expose them, and then when the right time comes, the Sabira cakap tadi, pilih lah. Because most of the athletes yang kita tahu, memang dia multi-talented kan? Multi-talented in many sports. Macam Sabira ni main few sports for the states. Betul. And I believe uh, this is what uh, the talent plan will address and also cater. Uh, on the role of athletes, uh, teachers and coaches, parents, uh, the community, uh, community NSA, uh, okay. private sector. And so I, I believe this is something that uh, uh, a good guiding document for us. And allow me to share uh, uh, the model itself, uh, if I can read here. Uh, our recommendation for the talent model will involve for four stages, sebenarnya. There are four stages, eh? So stage one, uh, we call it uh, initiation. So this is where uh, uh, the children uh, are exposed to motor skill development, uh, multilateral development, uh, and uh, exposed to uh, variety of sports lah. Uh, so this is where, macam saya cakap tadi, grassroots detection. So the the bermula dah five to twelve sudah bermula. Pasal dia mengenal sukan, uh, they are nurtured and guided based on their preferences. Uh, orientation will happen this uh, at this stage, and then uh, for some sport will will they will specialize earlier. So specialization will uh, generally will start uh, around 10 to 17. So it depends on sports. Then yeah? uh, 10 to 17 there will be uh, more serious, uh, more technical sports specific training. Uh, so with the guidance from the coaches, 10 to 17, and then uh, mm, normally okay, okay. as I onwards, uh, they will get involved in uh, truly lah high performance level lah elite at least uh, 17 and above uh, and also after post career pun involved uh, stage 4 is post career stage 3 is where they, perf- they need to perform so from 17 or 18 up to the uh, last day of their career of being at least they will need to perform lah so that, that is high performance lah basically so okay, let's let's post, let's uh, let's, uh, let's, mm. let's so stage 4 is post career mm mm-hmm. So let's let's listen from Zaid. Zaid oh, yeah, sure. Here. Hmm. Yeah, so uh, maybe hello. we can explain. Uh, hello, 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 everyone. <laughs> uh, apolo- apologies uh, for the uh, delay. Uh, Mr. Uh, Faizal, uh, Mr. Safigol, and uh, Mr. Yunus. Okay. Uh, uh, okay. Sabotage. Okay. <laughs> no, 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 no. Really, no, really. Uh, boss. Uh, okay. Uh, yeah. I think boss. Uh, all of you have mentioned about the talent model and also on the uh, TID perspective for football, etc. And just, just just to add a bit on the, the aspiration that uh, Mr. Faizal mentioned just now, which is uh, we look into other um, uh, international models, uh, and and we we cannot be look uh, be basically uh, using one method that fits all. We need to really develop and with our own mold. So as we come across all that, the aspiration that uh, 
uh, we accounted like uh, enhance uh, access and opportunity to sports and these uh, fundamental movement skills like what Mr. Faisal mentioned just now, the fun element of multilateral and of course the certified PE teachers and coaches at all levels. So these are the aspiration that um, uh, we find that can be adopt adopted in the uh, Malaysia Tan model. And uh, and I, I I think I need to, um, yeah, the initial part of the discussion, uh, in a way I need to uh, brief a bit on uh, the TID all about, if I may, can I just... Uh, yeah, please, wait, please, wait. We were waiting, we were waiting for that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, yeah, yeah, TID definitely, TID is uh, talent and education and development. And the main, uh, the main, the main components, uh, 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 talent detection, uh, which is the uh, discovery of potential performance uh, in a population of young people who are not currently involved in specific sport yet, as uh, okay. as what uh, what widely uh, widely uh, cited by Vians uh, two thousand seven, and the main two, the other one is uh, talent identification. Talent identification is a process of recognizing the current participants with the potential to excel in a particular particular spot. So um, this is uh, this is the the, uh, the the stage whereby most of the uh, developed countries they uh, sometimes they they start straight with sport specific, which is talent identification. And uh, other than that, uh, it's uh, developing it. I mean the talent development, which is uh, providing optimal. Uh, development and also opportunity for them to basically um, achieve the maximum level of their performance in a particular spot. And uh, I believe uh, Mr. Ahmad Faizal also mentioned uh, about talent orientation, which is another uh, another element that we are also looking into to adopt, mm -hmm. which is um, oriented, orient uh, the talent based on what they like to do instead of what uh, they are given to play. I mean, uh, of course, uh, most important is uh, giving a broad development, uh, letting them okay. play multi sports, and um, and basically orient them and let them uh, play things that they like to do. Okay, it, 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 when, when does sorry, when does when does any kind of specialization takes place actually? Okay, uh, all right. Um, it depends. Uh, it depends. Um, for instance, that uh, some sports uh, need specialists early, like um, gymnast, diving, etc. And uh, but okay. uh, normally uh, there is specialized. Um, the, the the ideal the ideal age would be. Uh, uh, it would be uh, like thirteen above. Uh, ideally, uh, it depends on the growth. Uh, and also and, depends on the sport, right? And also the sports as well. But uh, most of the sport would be better to specialize late. So that we, uh, most important is to give them uh, the option and to give them uh, the, 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 the right things that uh, is good for them. Sometimes um, uh, they, they might have different potential. They might have uh, ability to play different things. But if we hope for early specialization, like maybe uh, people want them to just play one sport, for instance, but uh, skill-wise they and their potential-wise, uh, he or she uh, is good to other sports. So most important is to provide the right platform, to, to provide the option um, for them to uh, develop in their own, uh, their own preference. And uh, for long-term athlete development, it's definitely good um, uh, to uh, let them uh, basically develop them because sometimes uh, we tend to select um, select people early so that they can be become like a maybe under 12 champion, under 70 champion for, for the sake of competition whereby uh, the focus should be on on developing developing the, the potential talent. If, if I may share a bit, um, uh, for, for example, if you relate to football, uh, I think this is mm -hmm. something that uh, I think was worth sharing in uh, this is uh, apply in Belgium uh, they they have this um, this uh, bio bending approach whereby uh, they have uh, early 
Li uh, Li Metro. They have a rich Metro and also Lit Metro. So what they have is um, they they have a pool of quality players. Uh, like they have uh, in the national team and they for early matches and they also have um, for future team uh, uh, for lead matches. Meaning to say that they 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 uh, they they do not really select only on the current performers, but they look into the potential performers and looking oh, into. Oh, you mean that? You mean you mean that they would able? I mean the system would address people who are late bloomers, people who develop later uh, uh, in the sports would be able to be grasped through the program. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so meaning to say they have. Different specialized program for different category for different uh, achiever. For 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 early, of right. course, they they will definitely join the national team. But some of the cases, uh, uh, for late bloomer, they they join a bit late, but they they are still selected. They they are still um, they they manage to enter into that. So meaning to say that they are different uh, for early and uh, average, and also for late bloomer, they can still make it to the elite, elite level. Uh, so that is um, that is one uh, that, that that's uh, kind of the system that um, do not diselect early. The focus is on developing uh, potential to achieve the best that they can. Uh, it just not uh, not just in football, but also for other sports as well. Uh, yeah. So this is uh, I think something that uh, we are now um, also embarking with Ministry of Education. And uh, we also adopt this um, this method of uh, motor skills coordination and looking at the potential mm-hmm. performance and not just the current fitness performance and uh, not neglecting the uh, their growth uh, their growth and maturity, uh, which is also important uh, because sometimes uh, we tend to. Um, yeah, we tend to, to 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 select the fastest at that particular time, and uh, we hope that we can uh, fill the gap by uh, by grooming lo- by grooming and by guiding and by looking into this um, potential uh, with primary school. Uh, at the moment, we are uh, I think uh, Mr. Faisal mentioned just now uh, the collaboration with Ministry of Education. We are currently uh, planning to have this uh, proof of concept for this year and next year. And uh, and also uh, in addition, uh, we the most important is for us to address the right method. Uh, and as as you know, TID is um, TID is a field that keep on evolving. Like for instance, like for football, <laughs> football. Yeah, for, Safiro, for, yeah, for, Safiro mentioned uh, about that as well. Yeah, yeah, in UK they have DNA. I mean, for for uh, Sean coming, they also exploring on DNA, and a um, lot of uh, the, the field is. Um, Ever evolving, so um, we also need to keep abreast with the latest method that they, they are using, and uh, basically try to apply the um, the right method as of now, and also mm-hmm. keep on improving and uh, refine our strategy for that one. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you know. Right. You know. Wonderful. You know. Uh, yes, I saw. Uh, I believe. Uh, uh, Safiro also, I, I think, have the same uh, view on this. Uh, the, the challenges that you are currently uh, facing, uh, meaning for the for many years, is how to ensure that uh, the the talent pipeline is uh, big and sufficient enough to ensure that uh, there are no dropouts uh, in the system. Uh, Safiro himself, he he went to the states uh, for his degree. Uh, when you look at, at the NCAA uh, system, uh, I believe uh, this is where uh, in the Malaysian system that we are currently uh, lacking in, uh, in which, uh, of course, uh, for many years we have been posed uh, these questions, where do we go after high school, lepas sekolah menengah, ke mana anak-anak kita yang terlibat dalam sport, bukan football saja, many sports. Where do we go for quality competition in Malaysia? So I think mm-hmm. need question mm-hmm. yang memang uh, have been bogging us lah for many years. How do we ensure that the pipe is uh, right? I mean, Big we, enough. We, 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 kita jarang lah ada problem dekat school sebenarnya. We have been excel, excel 
uh, at ASEAN level, yeah, world level, exactly. winning this and that, kan? But when it matters most, kita selalu ada isu. And I believe having quality competitions at the college level, tertiary education, uh, after high school lain, selepas keluar menengah, uh, 18, 19, 20, 23 ni, this is the critical uh, stage which we haven't really addressed yet. We have, we, we do have, uh, yeah, apa tu, masuk university system, but it's still like, uh, well, we can do more lah, we can do more. Uh, itu yang <laughs> I nak cakap lah, we can do more. Uh, uh, we can, tra- we need to transform the system, ensuring top quality competition, getting the the best of athletes, maybe in Asia, ataupun in ASEAN region, to come to Malaysia to study, be a student athlete, And from there, we can have uh, quality competition uh, similarly to to what is offered dekat maybe SEA Games ke apa. So, so with that, uh, kita when they graduate or they 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 move to next level, three level, they are, uh, we can say, prepared lah. Prepared for to face the uh, elite level challenges. So, I believe that itu yang masalah-masalah kita hadapi sekarang. Hmm. Yeah, mm. I, I think mm. apart from that, mm. I think I think mm. one of the biggest one mm. of the biggest predicaments that uh, mm. a lot of I mean a lot of you guys are facing is mm. is is the need for collaboration. I think when you collect data, when you start doing your surveys, when you start doing your research, and then you have the national sporting associations or clubs or whatever or schools or universities not not really utilizing those data or not really you know um uh, um capitalizing on that. You know, it doesn't. It doesn't really push the ID to its fullest potential, isn't it? Mm-hmm. When you don't have that collaboration from from the Ministry <clears> of uh, <throat> Education, for example, that would be a danger. I think mm-hmm. I think Safiro, to a certain extent, has experienced that if you're working closely yeah. with the with KPM, yeah. Yeah. Uh, just just to touch a bit on Zaid's point and, yeah. and also Faisal's point and also your point on 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 basically what is the reality down there uh, when it comes to Malaysia, lah. And <clears throat> memang uh, kalau ikut Faizal cakap tu I'm a firm believer dan aku suka sangat sistem dekat US tu di mana the industry the sports industry itself at at school level dengan uh, college level lepas tu go up to pro tu dia seolah-olah seamless macam the conveyor belt tu kau dah boleh agak dah bila kau anak kau masuk sekolah dekat uh, junior high uh, elementary school junior high dengan high school tu semua you already see your pathway if you were to choose that pathway you see it clearly you know where you want to go so dia nampak dah ok lepas ni I will try and get into college I can choose what program uh, I want to become a student athlete dekat college mana yang mana yang sesuai untuk dia yang mana yang dia ada hmm. close to the to the heart and all that and straight away to pro tetapi mak That system to wujud setelah sekian lama, you can imagine this. Yeah. Uh, be- baseball, for example, 1869, they start, and then, and, and then after that, Major League Baseball was founded in 1902. And then NCAA, the, because NCAA nampak that sports can be developed at colleges sebab universiti semua ada facilities. So ada track, ada padang, ada stadium. <laughs> In Texas saja, at least sekarang ni, kan? Sekarang ni, at least 20 high school ada stadium yang kapasiti dia 20 ribu. Jangan cakap... High school? Pas- yeah, high school high, or university? High school, high school in Texas saja. Jangan cakap pasal uh, uh, Bobby, Bow- Bobby, Bowden, Bobby Bowden punya field uh, University Faizal lah dekat FSU tu sampai sampai almost 90,000 kapasiti dekat 85 ribu. University aku dekat Arkansas yang kampung tu pun sekarang ni kapasiti dah almost 80,000, 75,000 dan tiap-tiap game tu memang selalu penuh. Mm-hmm. So you you're talking about a system yang kalau macam kalau pergi dekat sports department Florida State University tu pun dah almost equal or even bigger and more modern than what ISN is having. Betul tak Azan? Yeah, yeah. They mm-hmm. they are so developed then they have all this mini mini what we call mini ISN all over the country, okay. all country to make sure to facilitate to support the system so memang the system dekat US ni memang aku memang dah in love dengan benda ni lama dah cuma nya the reality dekat Malaysia ni we have to work with the reality bila kita start NFDP aku boleh bagi contoh NFDP lah sebab yang tu yang I have first hand experience 
So bila mm-hmm. mas bila masuk macam benda-benda kita cakap tadi kan. Kita kena work from uh, from bottom up. Apa yang tak ada dekat kat bawah tu. So there's no scouting been done. Kita tengok dekat Belgium ke dekat mana-mana ke. Kalau pergi Wikipedia tengok type Kevin De Bruyne uh, at what time dia masuk academy, youth career dia. Kan? Seven years old. Six years old dah. Lepas tu dia pergi gen apa semua tu. So dia ada pathway dia. So kita nak membina pathway macam tu. But at the same time, kelab-kelab professional dekat Malaysia ni belum nak invest into all those things. So ma- suka tak suka, NFDP kena jadi, kena kena jadi, uh, <coughs> kena mainkan that role tu sementara dia orang re- tak re- nak ready lah. So dapat sebab tu wujudnya Akademi Kebeli Tunas bagi peluang budak-budak ni berlatih dan yang very importantnya yang Faizal cakap tadi competition. Prior to that competition is so scarce. Even bola sukan nombor satu dalam negara ni semua competition at age group level memang susah. Sebila so, tak ada competition, tak ada cukup platform, macam mana nak scout? You can come with all kind of expertise nak cakap pasal bio bending ke nak determine between nak cek, nak determine between mature uh, late maturity dengan early maturity dan sebagainya kan hmm. tapi tak ada competition to see all these kids so no, there's simply not enough competition for no, you to do any no, kind of analysis no. ha. so we felt that we felt that okay lah kalau nak sediakan competition platform untuk semua sekolah dalam Malaysia ni tak mampu sebab you know yang uh, kajian bukan ada bukan ada duit untuk semua benda so basically <laughs> We we try to do competition di antara academy-academy dalam NFBP which is banyak. Kita, cover, I think I think cover dalam 20,000 orang dah cover dah. Walaupun pool yeah. tu sepatutnya dibanyakkan lagi tetapi at least ada that platform so that pe- these kids can be scouted. And then co- sama lah macam sukan-sukan lain. You want you want to even masuk um, orang kata apa? masuk nak cerita dengan the, the cikgu dengan the parents pasal specialization tapi kita tak pernah tengok pun budak dia tu competing dengan mana-mana dalam mana-mana competition maybe adalah satu dua nampak wah nampak budak ni bagus tapi tak tak banyak that's the thing kalau selalu nampak selalu nampak dan selalu banyak competition so lagi banyak uh, assumption or lagi banyak option kita boleh bagi dekat budak-budak tu So, tadi Zai ada mention about biobending which is uh, uh, we talk about this last night as a uh, late maturity and early maturity and you also said that uh, kalau boleh after this nak apply with KPM I uh, was just wondering currently uh, what kind of m- method has been used contohnya with uh, Saat dekat dekat NMDP dengan AMD takkan dia orang tak guna langsung dan tak touch langsung into all those areas. I'm just asking that. Is that is that uh, a yeah. question for uh, me Chavilo? Yeah, yeah, yeah because because that is that mentioned because we 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 just talk about it we touch on it uh, last night kan yeah, about we did. Yeah, we did. Uh, bukan NFDP apa semua tu. So I mean um, I, I I I I need to also know lah because kalau macam benda tu tak dipraktiskan Uh, within NFDP pun yang memang uh, close to you all then um, then 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 we have a problem lah I, I guess you need to be corrected hmm. uh, yeah uh, if you might if, if I may respond to that um, mm-hmm. okay um, uh, yeah uh, I, I cannot comment, comment much on the, the, the practice there but I believe uh, they, they might have adopted that as well but uh, this this method is actually something that need to be applied to all basically not just um, football and and i, I believe uh, recently uh, and rdp and also abm is also applying um, this kind of method as well and uh, and so far they, they have got um, a good feedback on that uh, in sense of uh, like for for abm for instance that they have also um, doing this uh, the ID instrument method to all that uh, and then they also managed to come up with um, the late mature and that they, they put it into, uh, I mean, the biobanding is also being applied uh, at ABM as well. So um, uh, I, I think this is something that should be applied uh, to all 
NSA and to all sports. Uh, I, I cannot comment much on the um, specifically on, on on football, and I think this is something that need need need, need to have a further discussion as well. And uh, as for 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 ISN, um, we believe that um, uh, we need to in a way discuss and collaborate, uh, and we should share all these kind of uh, approach so that uh, all of us and basically can can apply uh, to to this kind of method. Yeah. And of course, um, yeah, this combination it is a multifaceted approach. Actually, I mean, it's not not a single thing. It should be integrated. I mean. All angles, like coaches' eyes, also uh, take place, and it's just that um, all these tools, all these uh, method, uh, is to assist basically. It's a, a method to measure the uh, reliability or the accuracy of the things that we do. So, um, uh, yeah, I think uh, this is something that uh, applicable for all actually. <laughs> And I, I, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 yeah, I, yeah, I cannot be commenting much on, on that, yeah. on, that, on that part. Yeah. Let the, me explore the, on that. Yeah. The the reason I ask that is because bagus juga when you are touching into that matter dalam the, your document, you give an example that is ongoing right now. Contohnya kalau dekat AMD, dekat SSN, dekat SSM apa semua is already using that, so they probably have already have data on late maturity dengan early maturity ni. I'm sure Saad and Abdi yeah. and scouting uh, team at NAVP dah ada. So, sebab sometimes when you when when you tell, uh, but if you have if you have a, a, a reference reference point, lagi senang, um, you know, uh, they will not faham, especially at schools. I give you a simple case of uh, Arif Aiman, <coughs> eh, yes, right now playing in Harimau Malaya. So, dia punya growth the masa dia dekat AMD tu sampai dia form 4 pun dia masih kecil among the smallest in the team so hmm. at, at that time dia banyak lose out uh, playing time because of his uh, size is his size hmm. lah so basically lebih kurang dia punya experience samalah juga dengan Antoine Griezmann uh, masa growing up Antoine Griezmann uh, none of the french academy nak dia sampai dia kena pergi uh, to Spain hmm. Uh, and and then he then dia dia masuk academy kat sana and then came back to play for France under 19 um then in the case of Antoine uh dia dia tak tak grow much after that but Arif Aiman bila dia form 5 bila dia dah keluar daripada AMD sebab in apa in his quest to get more playing time they join JDT so kebetulan masa form 5 tu lah form 5 dengan masa dia 18 uh, between 17 and 18 tu they shoot up dan dia sekarang dia sekarang memang good height so with the skills yang dia ada yang dia dah develop dekat AMD tu uh, it suits him well and I have got very very good response from all good feedback from all the coaches dekat dekat JDT from coaches yang you know uh, under under 21 under 19 dengan Benjamin Mora pun dia cakap kata Arif Aiman's skills has developed and is more mature than some compared to some of the senior players yang ada dekat JDT. Cuma nya dia I play, hope uh, I hope I hope he's playing tonight lah bro. I, I, I don't know lah what he's playing. Uh, so so this this all these examples is very good to to share uh, when you guys are presenting the document to to the stakeholders so that they can see they can see and nampak sendiri how uh, an example a reference to it. Yes. Uh, I believe, uh, you know, uh, football I mean, I, is, a, is a very good yeah. example of how uh, CID or talent development should be uh, managed. Eh? And I believe NSA's yeah. role uh, in talent development is super critical. You know, uh, apart, uh, yes. we need all the NSA's to develop their own sports, sports specific uh, talent plan. That's why. Because uh, they, they knew their, their sports better. They are the custodian of their respective sports. So they need to have their own plan based on their understanding of the ecosystem. So with that, I believe uh, we have deeper understanding of what is the requirement or what is the specific methodology for specific sports. Because uh, for for instance, like for MSN, ISN, I bought some more too. Yeah, we need to NSA to to do that for us. Uh, then that's what we yeah, talk yeah, about lah. Yeah, yeah. Then too lah, but we believe the the ecosystem prosper. It's not 
all about imagination saja kan and they say banyak role lagi yang among others adalah ini having the talent plan and then yalah uh, go deep lah go deep uh, go deep on this hmm. well i think i hmm. think i think with your hmm. my hmm. talent uh, program hmm. or plan and then with the booklet mm. that you're sharing with you know mm. the parents the teachers the, the people mm. in NSA mm. i think it would be to a certain extent yeah. be helpful at least they would know where mm-hmm. to start or create that certain level of awareness mm. that would move them to you know initiate some kind of program with you guys at ISM i believe that's that's, that's i think i believe once that my talent plan has been executed mm-hmm. i yes. believe we'll see a more uh, a more comprehensive uh, uh initiative from all our national sporting yeah. associations mm-hmm. that's what i think um uh, it's it's actually 10:16 oh. uh, i i hope you guys don't mind if we extend this a bit uh, uh, a bit further a bit because i got some uh people who want to come up and uh speak mm-hmm. with questions or uh share their experience i hope you um, you guys don't mind yeah Can yeah continue yeah, sure. this maybe just for another 15 okay. minutes or so sure, sure i'm okay i'm okay all right great wonderful so um I'm just going to invite our first person here. Uh, I'm going to approve first. It's M R M Z and then Malaysian flag three times. Hello, bro. Hello. Okay, I think he's no longer around. Been waiting for too long. Um, Carl. Carl was one of our guests uh, for the first Twitter Spaces. Uh, spaces. Last week, so uh, Carl, are you there? Hello, good evening. Hello. <laughs> good evening, mate. Hello. Um, good evening. Hi. Yes, yes, we all can. We all can hear you. What's okay. your question, right. mate? Uh, Or this okay. is something that you is, have to share? Yeah, yeah okay. Uh, the context of the whole space that I've been listening for the past uh, one hour. The problem with the idea is not having. In, you guys have said. It's not in having enough competition to get the best talents and the best athletes to uh, compete in uh, national, international, new level again. However, it shows that there's not enough sports clubs to accommodate uh, this on and off near uh, pitch of play near talents lah. So, what are the solutions to create and develop sustainable and comprehensive sporting clubs that will synergize with the whole ecosystem? So, like when you guys said about you know talents competition, one of the missing ingredients is clubs. Sporting clubs, you know, be it football, netball, or whatever. So, what are the solutions, Yusuf? Um, is that is that Safiro, Faisal, Zaid? Do you guys want to take um, this or if I can? Uh, All right. Okay. Uh, there are uh, a variety of models that can be used. Number one, you have to create that that community of sports. The cut German, uh, I think someone shared with me two two or three years ago. Dia katalah one district tu, dia appoint katalah uh, uh, siapa-siapa yang duduk kat dalam area tu, kalau berminat nak go for football, uh, this one school ni is specific for that. Bukan maksudnya you kena masuk sekolah tu, but you can use the facilities. Everyone can use that facilities. Kalau football, kalau dia minat pimpong, uh, ada a different centre pula. Kalau dia minat Uh, other sport macam basketball dekat situ. So from there, those uh, those tempat uh, bersukan tu, dia slowly evolve akan jadi club of their own. Yes. Yeah. And then they will self-organize dalam area dia tu competitions. And then because the other the other district pun uh, buat yang sama juga. Because very, very orang kata apa kalau dia very tak bukan bukan costly everybody will pull in so dia akan jadi inter district lepas tu lepas inter district tu antara club tu dia jadi they grow bigger and bigger so that is one model yang i yang i pernah dengar yang i suka because uh, because keadaan kita ni ialah kita kita dah ada apa the reality tu dah ada kat bawah uh, kita kita dalam keadaan yang kita tak boleh certain certain thing kita tak boleh backtrack kita tak boleh backtrack akta uh, ataupun dasar pendidikan negara to make sure that sekolah-sekolah apa semua suddenly ada room untuk uh, sports jadi more vibrant uh, banyak benda yang kita tak susah nak tukar bukan tak boleh tukar but susah nak tukar so kalau nak start something new 
that probably be a good a good thing for that that we go area by area. So area ni Kubang Pasu uh, ni jadi tempat untuk main ni, ni tempat untuk main ni, tempat untuk main ni. But dia akan slowly jadi clubs and then they will start their own competition. I think that's, it's the same thing as well. Mm. At, uh, I think boleh tambah sikit. Uh, that. Uh, boleh, boleh. Uh, 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 just, uh, saya tertarik dengan uh, with, with the point Mr. Safi Gomez mentioned tadi. Sebab um, I also have I've listened about this. Uh, they call it like uh, in German school cluster sports club. Uh, school cluster okay. like for, for, for example like sekarang what we're having now kan kita ada this um, setiap sekolah like school A, school B, they they will have like badminton, hockey team. And school B also have badminton and any. Why why by with the cluster system tu, they specialize on the the cluster itself lah. Like school A focusing on football and netball saja. Sebab in in Malaysia uh, kita we are uh, uh, school system punya punya ni lah. Uh, Probably for a start, maybe this kind of method uh, mungkin boleh di uh, explore lah, boleh dilihat. Di uh, like school, uh, school classes, sports club ni maybe for a start, this something the rise of other other sports sports club lain lagi kan untuk uh, grow kan lagi di ecosystem yeah. tu. I think what okay, please, I think uh, you know, what yeah. guy is trying to explain is uh, hmm. by having uh, that demand system tu. Uh, For instance, if school A is uh, having a good coaches or facilities in hockey and football, for instance, uh, so they, all the students around that particular district or sub-district, they will go there to to train there. So so each, each school will have their own uh, specialization, lah. contoh ataupun uh, sports, yeah, yeah. Uh, sports that they offer. Maksudnya, uh, all range of sports. Lah. So school A might be... Uh, Okay, in football. School B, maybe table tennis or uh, badminton. School C, uh, maybe uh, apa tu, other sports lah, other sports. Hmm. So, it, uh, macam tu lah, dia punya sistem. Yang German tu. So, it is something that, worth, because mm. uh, it will uh, address the issues of resources juga lah kan. Because tak semua sekolah ada school, semua facilities. So, this is one thing lah. And yeah. I believe, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, of course, kita tak boleh lari daripada football punya current grassroots system uh, the interest among parents among communities uh, in football pun tinggi uh, they the organic organic uh, cakap apa movement ni uh, in grassroots football has been happening in, in particular in urban areas kan so this is one of example on how community themselves uh, trying to help lah uh, to contribute to the ecosystem So we need more in other sports as well lah. Uh, sekarang ni memang, uh, yelah, banyak movement apart from the school system. Uh, dulu-dulu memang kita uh, very much relying on the school system kan. So now kita tengok macam saya cakap tadi, those yang pergi AT uh, during weekdays akan pergi private club uh, during weekends. Macam my son pun, uh, weekend pergi private club, AT uh, is still kami, is still selesai kamis lah. Tentu. So, football is a good example lah. So maybe other sports can start emulate to emulate that kan and again and then say need to play the role juga lah in this hmm. 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 i think one of the hmm. biggest factors hmm. eh, uh, gentlemen i think one of the biggest factors that causes uh, that, that resulted in a in a certain level of success for grassroots hmm. football and how the community itself is running their own competition you know running their own activities hmm. right is due to the fact that there is the the the, the existence of a uh, Uh, reliable public infrastructures for that sports mm-hmm. to take place, right? Um, I think in, that's why in urban areas you have a lot of these uh, grassroots movements. Uh, primarily, it's because there's a lot of infrastructure within the urban setting that that facilitates this kind of organic yeah. uh, development, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, here in Kemaman, we are very fortunate uh, that uh, we have a uh, stadium, Stadium Mochili. That already has uh, that already has an upgraded uh, field and lighting and all, mm-hmm. so that somehow to somehow uh, has alleviated the excitement uh, in within Kemaman and now and you you have a team, you have a league, uh, we have two teams now who is very aggressive, and then the league itself uh, we have two leagues. Of course, nowadays it's being locked due to the lockdown. You know, it's not being uh, it's not being uh, taking place. But yeah, I think I think one of the most important thing for this thing to take place for schools, yes, is the resources. 
I think we need the ministry to start investing more on on this and 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 other infrastructures for school. But uh, another thing that we need to look into as well is for the state or the government to invest in public infrastructure. And organically, things like this will take take into position. Yeah, and, and also to, just to add on that, you know, uh, not necessarily yeah. everything is ministry. Um, yeah. School, kena, uh, the ministry also can play a role so that they don't tak strict sangat untuk yeah. allow uh, outside parties to come and and help exactly uh, help improve the pitch help improve exactly. some facilities and all that so so that so that taklah membebankan ministry sangat exactly Betul. exactly i would love that yeah. yeah i would love to see more private enterprises being involved in you know helping uh you know maintain the field or maintain the gymnasium at schools you know it would be mm. it would be a lot more exciting yeah If you look at uh, Chinese schools, there are a lot of private investment in basketball courts and yeah? basketball arena and yeah? Chinese mm, schools. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, yeah. I have I have this. Uh, I played in one pitch in Sekolah Tamil di Sendayan. Uh, the uh, hook up with a local uh, club, and the club uh, were given uh, something of leasing lah to to manage the football field, and they build a nice uh, pavilion. Uh, a two story and they manage uh, with the flat lights semua i think yeah with the it, it's up to the respective uh, pengetua or guru besar to talk to yeah to MOE on how to convince them to yeah to ensure uh, that is a win win situation for both schools uh, for the children for the school children and also for the community uh, to use uh, the facilities and and yeah, uh, I, i think that's a good yeah, model that needed. everyone could use yeah. and in the end uh, they can always able to maintain the field uh, and then share the profits for PIBG ke, for the sports club ke, macam tu lah kan? That's yep, one yep, of the ways lah. Yep, yep. Hello, Carl, did you did... <laughs> Hello, Carl, did you get your your your, your answer? Yeah, uh, partially. Uh, just, uh, what about the post school lah, you know, the, the that segment, you know, uh, the sporting clubs aspect. Yeah, like, I, you know, because just, I, I guess hmm. I guess what we're trying to say is you improve on the community punya facilities baru uh, and the community pun akan guna uh, tak semestinya you know schooling age saja pakai the, the padang in school so probably they can segment uh, the time uh, usage uh, lepas tu the community want to semua boleh pakai juga so that's the beginning of probably a, a start for a club dekat situ Yeah, yeah. Uh, I would like to second that juga. Uh, I believe uh, it was written somewhere in the uh, uh, Malaysia Plan document for not only schools, for mm-hmm. uh, uh, government training institute. Can they they have lots of facilities inside for uh, other edu- educational institutions to start sharing their resources lah to open up, juga. Because uh, the usage actually is very 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 low. Uh, I mean, in government training institute and institute, institute latihan awam, yeah, we have lots of them throughout the country. Uh, banyak yang tak yang kurang digunakan. Bila orang datang training datang khusus baru guna. So this one ah, <laughs> tu banyak tu tu ada yeah. reality je lah banyak. That's, that's banyak kita banyak facilities, uh, <laughs> banyak facilities uh, tapi tak tak uh, tak uh, being uh, apa tu lah. Under utilize lah. Under utilize lah, boleh kata. Yeah. Okay. Um. All right, gentlemen, it's already 10.30. Mm-hmm. Uh, I just want to, let's, let's just end this session. I just have one question uh, that's been bugging me uh, throughout this whole uh, session. Um, we promise the people here to talk about something about naturalization, right? So um, there's a game coming up involving a lot of naturalized players, you know, uh, and uh, it's a very important game. It's against Vietnam. Uh, we need to win this one. So in that context, uh, can TID or to a certain has can TID assist the football association of Malaysia or something to 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 come up with a more comprehensive plan <laughs> for our naturalisation program? Is it is it being applied before by other countries? Is that it? Do you have any idea? Ah, uh, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, interesting, uh, interesting issue actually. Okay, um, 
yeah, it's it's actually been been applied um, in uh, like a country like Singapore is also applying and uh, in other countries as well. Um, but yeah, it, it also relates with um, of course uh, the goal of uh, uh, the goal of achieving success or winning a competition. Okay, um, and the other one is the glory of. Uh, having and developing our own talent and uh, and fully um, utilizing on uh, the, the local talent, right? So, um, yeah, yeah. My, my thought is, um, yeah, it depends on the, um, uh, the goal as such. Um, it, it definitely, it'll, it'll bring a, a good uh, strategy in, in the sense of um, strengthening uh, the uh, sport or the uh, the game uh, for tournament, but um, yeah, that I think I will answer that. Um, yeah. Uh, so you're saying you 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 you're saying that you're saying that you have the capacity to come up with some kind of framework to help, for example, the Football Association of Malaysia or any NSA who is interested in naturalization, but you prefer that TID to work on something on a long term. With local talents, right? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. For for me, it's um, uh, it's uh, we we always need to look into the long term. I mean, um, in, in in short term, we, we we need to strengthen. We should need need to strengthen uh the um the local team, and at the same time, uh, learning and tap into um the uh, uh how to say this um successful figures or. And we, we need to basically um, explore the short term and also the long term strategy for that. Uh, that that would be my 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 thoughts on this. Mm, yeah. that, do you do you echo his you thoughts? Know, uh, when we talk about sports uh, in general, uh, I think we also need to realize that Malaysia also Malaysians players have also been naturalized in badminton. In Singapore yeah, players yeah. is basically Malaysians playing for Singapore. Uh, so I believe the the aim of uh, any TID or development uh, programs is to uh, do our very best to produce the best players for the country. Uh, so my take on nationalization, because it's been it's it, it has been uh, I mean going on for many years. Even the best uh, football nation or uh, in the world is doing it. Uh, but in order for us to do it, uh, for me personally, we need to nationalize only the best. We need to pick the very best, not just for merely doing nationalization, just to please uh, the fans, uh, not please uh, some stakeholders. Uh, for me personally, taking uh, cools, Dion cools. Uh, so, that, that is a, yeah, a, a, okay. is, is a very good example of how, uh, a type of player that we should naturalize. Ah, itu personal lah. So you're saying you're saying huh? that if you're gonna, so you're hmm? saying that if you're gonna naturalize someone, it has very to good be quality at a younger age. Uh, good not, quality uh, at a younger age, uh, so that it can be. Not necessarily. It could be one of it. Uh, Qatar, Qatar okay. is doing it. Qatar, they've mm-hmm. been yeah. doing it because they they have lack of resources. I I went to Doha last year in 2019. I talked to some of the naturalized uh, uh, athletes, young athletes, eh? uh, just to share lah. You know. Uh, when mm-hmm. I talk to them mm-hmm. uh, in athletics, eh, uh, most of them are from African countries, uh, Morocco, uh, some part of Africa. They were given some sort of passport for for uh, for for three to five years, and at that age, uh, around fifteen to seventeen, they need to to hit a few KPIs lah in terms of timing in their events, and eh? five thousand meter, ke, three thousand meter, ke, mm-hmm. apa. So if they don't hit it, then they will go back to the country. Macam tu lah, tu, tu, so they, uh, lose, uh, they lose their the, 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 the PR, dia punya, dia punya tu lah, okay. status. So that's Qatar punya style lah. Tapi I think for Malaysia, currently for the number of football lah yang try to naturalize. And we we did that in Scrum 98 juga. Sama juga, kan. So if we want to okay. naturalize, betul-betul yeah, go for quality okay. lah. Go for quality. Kalau, okay. kalau tidak, akan backlash balik pada kita. Kan. Nah. Yeah, that's true. Hmm. Safirul. Yeah. Oh, so yeah, yeah, yeah. Would you are you are you would you be open? Let's say if you are you are still the CEO of NFDP, would you be open to naturalize young players into the program to AMD? Oh, I think NFDP ni dia with the objective of to to nak nak bina dan develop as many as quality homegrown. 
Yes. Ah, uh, the keyword is homegrown. So ma- okay. maksudnya, if we have done that for for many years for for 30 tahun lepas tu tak jumpa juga cari apa semua tu uh, then 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 we can we can think of uh, plan b yeah plan b yeah yeah but 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 mate like i mean uh. if if you bring in these kids at the age of 12 huh? bring in these kids at the age of 15 because as you said right you've been screening it mm-hmm. screening them at the early mm-hmm. stage you'll know to a certain extent whether they are capable of not we bring him at the age of 12 13 or 15 and then you know By the end, you know, it, it's a homegrown process. Ka- anyway. Kalau kalau benda tu scouting tu berlaku dalam negara kita, dia kebetulan anak expert. Is that is, expert, is that yeah. what you say? Anak expert memang bekerja kat sini. Memang sekarang Takpelah. sekarang pun yeah, ada yeah. ramai hmm. yang train, training dekat Academy Tunas ada juga. Hmm. Tapi hmm. there will come a time where they themselves have to make a decision. Yes. Dia hmm. nak balik ke negara dia orang ke ataupun nak try nak mencuba nasib in a, in a higher league yang better league yang Meaning they can get more money outside. Ke? It's up to them. Uh, so, up... so, 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 kids kan when it comes to football yeah. ke apa ke so you yes. you want to give uh, orang kata apa the the best platform for Malaysian kids first whoever yang ada in this country so okay. so that first that first before we even go aku tak kisah sebenarnya kalau macam dalam case of uh, uh, heritage players yang memang ada apa ni roots. Ah, yeah, ada roots hmm. ada Malaysian roots nanti hmm. if they are good enough and they can compete in in apa ni untuk pasukan kebangsaan no problem like like Faizal cakap lah about the on cools kan yeah. tapi tapi agak tak best tu bila kita start naturalizing player-player yang dah memang dah uh, tak peak dah dah memang dah downhill going down. Down, dah going down hmm. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Itu aku rasa harga pasport yang kita bagi dekat dia tu is, is terlalu mahal untuk dia berbakti untuk pasukan kebangsaan for what? For another 2-3 years or 4 years or 5 years. Aku rasa macam something is wrong somewhere lah hmm. kalau pakai pakai method. It cheapens, it cheapens our citizenship. Of course, it? of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> ja, dan, dan tak boleh disamakan pasal uh, dekat Europe punya imigran masuk-masuk tu. Sana tu is the club that is pursuing players from Africa apa semua ni because the club needs to uh, because ada value player-player ni kalau jual beli player mm-hmm. ni so it's the club that is pushing it and sebab mm. tu bagi dia dia orang passport dia masuk EU apa semua and then and then and then tiba-tiba dia orang jadi national players tu disebabkan dia dah bukan bukan maksudnya FA negara tu memang pergi mencari orang dekat Afrika tak Uh, so it cannot be a policy uh, a, a policy of us to go out there to find mm-hmm. yeah actively Tapi looking tapi kalau yeah. ada tiba-tiba yang ada roots Malaysian roots why not tu satu dua kalau expect. memang expect tu dah lama duduk kat Malaysia mana dia memang main kat sini kalau dia decide to 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 play in our colors why not macam sumare kan ni ya macam sumare yeah okay 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 All right. Thank you very much, Safira. Thank you very much, Faizal. Thank you very Thanks, much, you know. Syed, for spending an additional 40 minutes. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> promise for an hour, mm-hmm. but we're giving everyone an hour and 40 mm-hmm. minutes. Thank you to all the mm-hmm. listeners. Um, this is VSN 2030 Twitter Spaces series number two. We were we were talking about talent ID and development. Uh, uh, if you guys have any opinion or anything that you guys want to share. Um, or any uh, insight that is useful for the development of the VC Sukarnagara blueprint, please feel free to go to vsn2030.my. There's a platform there where you can share and help and help the country shape the future of sports here. Thank you very much, and uh, we'll be having another series next week. So tune in and um, catch you guys all again. Thank you very much. Thank you guys. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so much everyone. All right. Bye. Thank you know. Okay. Stay safe everyone. Good night. Assalamualaikum. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Peace out.